Hello. Hi, Abhinandan. Hi, Jatinaya. Hi. Hello, all of you. Good morning. Uh, for this data science demo, uh, we are waiting for a uh, few candidates to join. So we'll be starting in a few minutes. So uh, just please hold, hold on uh, for a few more minutes as we'll be starting this uh, demo. Hello all, a very good morning to all of you. <clears throat> so uh, as uh, as people are joining in, let me uh, give you a quick uh, understanding of what we are doing today. So we are organizing, uh, I think we are organizing a data science uh, demo 
uh, the understanding of what at instance we are offering as a part of this data science course uh, or the data science curriculum in general uh, will be i'll be taking you through the entire curriculum step by step what we are offering and what is in it for all of you to learn and grow uh, first of all let me thank you all for being here today as we are all coping up and struggling with the current situations around the globe regarding the coronavirus situation uh, first of all thanks you all to be a part of this uh, thank you all for observing social isolation and distancing today and making this uh, a really important uh, step uh, <clears throat> i hope you are all doing that because that is really important <clears throat> okay so a few uh, ground rules for this uh, most of the attendees all of the attendees are on mute so in order to ask anything from me uh, you have an option of raising your hand uh, in, in the dashboard, if you see and go to meeting webinar uh, dashboard, you will see that uh, there is a raise hand option. Raise hand option suggests that you have something to say. I will make a pause and then you have a question asking a, a panel. You can type in whatever you want to ask. Uh, if you have raised your hand, then I'll be, I will definitely be uh, waiting for you to ask something and we will have everything answered. Uh, uh, that is the only way we'll be able to communicate, uh, and uh, and this will uh, this uh, session will go on like that. Uh, so <clears throat> we will take a few pauses in between this session to have the Q and A's done uh, because this has to be a very interactive session. Because at Ethan's we make sure that the sessions and the courses are very interactive and hands on. So we will not be able to do anything on today, but we will definitely be able to uh, get questions answered for all of your queries. Okay. So I see uh, candidates uh, pouring in. Uh, welcome all again. So we have not started anything. We have just uh, started the introductory part. So right now, if you have any at the start of this session if, if any one of you has any question you can just uh, uh you can just post that okay <clears throat> uh mithilesh uh, uh do you still find my audio uh, uh a bit difficult to hear is this the problem for anyone else as well? Okay, uh, I see Manish, I see some other people are also saying that uh, the audio is getting better. So um, can you please check again uh, uh, from your side as well? Maybe some problem. Okay, audio is not very clear. I see. Just give me a second. Let me check my audio. Mm -hmm. Hello. Now is this better? Is this uh, is this clearer than previous? Can can you guys confirm? Oh yeah. Oh thanks thanks. Okay. So I'll be continuing with this uh, this audio then. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anything else that you have already posted? Um, uh, okay, everything was related to audio. So now that it is cleared, so I think we can move ahead. Any anything? Yeah, I'll I'll definitely be able to. Midilish, just give me a second. I'll be I'll introduce myself. Okay, Aditya has posted a long set of questions. 
uh, Aditya, these uh, these questions I'll be you'll be able to understand uh, uh, understand this uh, once we are doing this uh, sessions. Uh, give me some time and I think that these questions of yours will be answered within the session itself I don't think you need to switch between these branches or so on. I don't think so uh, Mithilesh um, I am not sure uh, About your question. I think I don't know Amit Okay Okay, guys, so let's uh, let's just move forward. So hi, uh, my name is Abhinandan, uh, Abhinandan Mukherjee, and uh, I I am a senior data scientist. Uh, I work with the, I work with the, one of the largest telecom providers in the world right now. Uh, I have around six plus years of experience. Uh, I have around six plus years of experience in this uh, particular area not exactly in data science all all of that but yes in this particular area so why I'm saying in this particular area you'll be able to understand what what I mean by that so um, I have my experience starting as a data engineer um as a as a data engineer i started on my career uh, with java programming scala programming and uh, had to work on large scale data sets uh, data processing on MapReduce and hadoop and uh, spark and uh, working with that i had gained a lot of experience into the data processing pipeline and then wanted to understand what's more what's coming after that once we process the data once we deal with this uh, large-scale data how to work with that what are the things that we need to do after that so while learning that I understood the things about data science uh, learned a lot about that worked on them on large-scale data and then slowly moved my career into data science and now I'm working as a full-time senior data and data scientist working on uh, artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning and statistical modeling and all sorts of cool stuff that you get to hear so uh, this journey has not been um, uh, not been very easy but yes this is very interesting so uh, I have uh, worked with uh, IT services industry uh, so uh, organizations like cognizant uh, data consultancy services and currently I am working with one of the largest telecom providers uh, I'll be I'll also tell you why telecom uh, is investing in uh, data science telecom and banking what are their perspectives and we'll talk we'll discuss about them okay um, I think Ganesh has some uh, query uh, just give me a second okay first of all let me tell you uh, Ganesh I'll clear this air out uh, with for all of you See, when you say that you are uh, having some experience in some format and then you are trying to reskill into another technology, industry does not treat you as a fresher. Your industry experience does not go into the drain. Okay. It doesn't work like that. There are lots of etiquette etiquettes and uh, functionalities that you learn in the industry being in some other role being in some other technology it does not go into the drain once you reskill yourself on the contrary an employee for any organization or in the industry when they show their capabilities of getting reskilled and possessing some knowledge in some other technology that actually carries a lot of value Please understand this you reskin into something you don't become a fresher you reskin into something you get a you become a better Employee for any organization Okay Probable employee, so don't think yourself like that Yes, Mithilesh machine learning AI are directly connected. They are not different things. They are All under the same umbrella. These are different ways of expressing the similar things. Okay, we will discuss We will discuss about this thing. I'll tell you exactly the entire understanding of these terms Yes, sure sure uh, 
I'll, I'll, I'll help you understand these things. Okay, so don't worry about that. Okay, so this was my um, my uh, career, uh, you can say professional uh, background. So where I am coming from. Uh, so I have been working. So I have experience into uh, training and teaching for a long time. I have. Uh, before joining any organization when I was a fresher I had experience of um, uh, Training Java and and some networking uh, like socket programming and stuff in my own college So I worked there as uh, as an assistant professor. I worked there as uh, as a teacher there So uh, the training journey started from there and then I once I have got into the industry I have completely uh, transformed into a professional trainer where I had to work with multiple uh, uh, multiple in engagements in in the organization itself and the training processes uh, is actually something that really that I really like that I really like and so I've come completely continued with with that stuff ever since <clears throat> and uh, and uh, with ethan's we have uh, with jatin sir i have started on uh, with this journey in the year 2017 uh, where we uh, where since then we have been doing different uh, programs on data science and modifying them according to the industry demands and needs we have continually grown for our core structure and uh, so uh, so that is how this journey has been and uh, and we will discuss about all of these uh, all of these aspect uh, in the coming few slides okay so so what what are we talking what are we going to discuss about uh, when we are saying data science as a course, what are we trying to discuss here? So here at Ethan's, we are we are offering you a, a set of courses that that helps you accomplish the one idea, that is to perform data science, to perform machine learning, to perform artificial intelligence through Python programming, and implement that in any uh, organization okay or any task that you have or any project that you want to perform be it you are a fresher be it you are an industry veteran be it you are a program manager uh, you're an application developer everywhere where uh, there is a possibility of applying these things you will be able to do that okay for that we have selected the programming language as Python because at Ethan's we are all Pythonic okay so <clears throat> we will take this entire idea uh, and explain it to you that the co how the course and the, how the syllabi has been structured, how the curriculum is structured for you. This has been structured in a very well defined format so that everyone would be able to understand. So under this big umbrella, we start with the programming language called Python. Then we understand what are the what are the uh, basic fundamental blocks and un uh, to understand data science where we understand statistics there are different formats of mathematics that we want to understand like some formats of simple linear algebra we want to understand some linear uh, some the simple probability so that combines us to give how to perform statistical analysis uh, through uh, some format of algorithmic experience we want to understand the concepts behind machine learning deep learning and then we uh, combine them together to understand the artificial intelligence paradigm altogether okay so let us start by understanding what is data science because this is a term that confuses a lot of people okay this is a term which is very intriguing but very confusing as well because there are so many jargons technical jargons out there about uh, data science and machine learning and so many myths that nobody is able to clear out there and understand to the root what are these things after all Okay, so let us do that first. Okay, first of all, why are these important? Because data science brings a lot of value to the business. A lot of value. Once a business understands that, okay, there is, uh, just give me a minute. Yeah, 
so once a business understands that there is a lot of value that uh, to be mined from data uh, that they have or they can source then business has a lot of potential of growing because if there is no potential of growing then there is no value to be added with data science or artificial intelligence or whatever it is you want to do okay so i'll clear out everything so first of all from where this all started from a harvard business review where they mentioned that data science is the data scientist is the sexiest job of the 21st century what did they mean by that they meant not only in terms of salary okay they meant in terms of the interest that uh, that a data scientist must possess in order to understand and grow with the uh, with the work that they have okay and also in terms of what value it brings to the business okay so let's say if you are let, i'm just giving i'm not saying anything ha is lower than anything else but just giving you an example let's say there is an application developer in an organization and he writes a few lines of code and then uh, <clears throat> and he writes it for a month he gets a salary he does everything but actually that few lines of code is put where in that application and what it actually does for the customer that application developer is not really affected by that okay but when it comes to data science what happens is a few lines of code a few a few uh, analysis that you do gets directly reciprocated in terms of business value to your client and it immediately reciprocates back to how the business has responded to your few things few analysis and it gets you uh, and it hits you to the core okay you get uh, get a complete understanding of how business works how different analysis helps businesses and how those things helps the business to grow okay or not to fail then that actually helps a particular developer a particular let's say uh, data scientist a particular analyst to understand everything everything that the business has to offer okay or not has to offer so it gives a lot of business value and as well it engages the people who are working on these platforms with the businesses completely engages them that is why this is called a sexiest job of the century because it engages you to the core because it helps you understand the business and brings value out of it and also it pays you good amount of salary because you do such stuff okay so that is why we are we are focused on this particular topic here where where we uh, we want to learn about data science <clears throat> so there are different different aspects to a data science professional there are different aspects to a data science professional let me give you a few understanding here so a data scientist is normally a professional who does a lot of stuff they work on the data they, they they collect the data they analyze data they interpret data and uh, they help ways to identify how a business can improve can uh, can not fail can succeed can make a certain benchmark all of that okay there are different formats of analysis that a data scientist or a data analyst or a machine learning engineer can perform and do stuff okay but one thing you have to understand a data scientist has to be a better programmer than all mathematicians out there okay and a data scientist has to be better at mathematics than all programmers out there you have to keep this in mind because without this understanding you are blind in this particular world it is a very good mixture of both of these uh, capabilities okay if you are not good at programming then whatever you have you can learn out there you will not be able to implement okay any data science any application that has machine learning and artificial intelligence involved whatever application you see whatever program you see whatever thing is out there it is all 
computationally programmatically developed okay so if you don't understand programming aspect of it you will not be able to implement anything out there another on the uh, another thing that you have to understand is that you can learn all of the programs you can learn all the algorithms but if you don't understand the mathematics out of it then you will not be able to understand how to use them okay where to use them when to use them you don't get those questions answered so be very sure about one thing a data scientist is always a better has to be a better programmer than most of the math mathematicians out there and a better mathematician than most of the programmer out there okay this has to be cleared out um, okay at this point anybody has any question <clears throat> you can just raise your hand you can just put a question on the question forum i'll be happy to okay my voice is again cracking <clears throat> i think it <clears throat> i had a problem in my throat <clears throat> hello can you hear me now is it better rade no thank you okay amithilesh uh, says does maths play a big role maths will play a big role my friend if, uh, maths will play a big role but it is basic mathematics see we don't expect you to be a uh, like when i say mathematics uh, we don't expect you to be nobody expects you to be a heavy mathematician out there okay but basics you have to understand and that we will make sure that you understand because that is a part of this curriculum Manish says, uh, okay. Yes, definitely. Manish, uh, okay, I'll explain this out. Industry 4.0, keep that in mind. Industry 4.0, if you want to understand why this is necessary for, uh, for a person who is working on a lot of IoT projects, uh, whether that is necessary or not, you should Google industry 4.0 that will really help you out understanding what is what is there okay dhiraj asks what is the difference between ai and data science dhiraj you have to wait on that for a few more minutes i'll uh, as we move forward i'll help that help uh, create that out okay because that is a part in the next few slides um uh, it will take a long uh, a few time like few months mithilesh to become a proper data scientist uh, Radhe asks sir how uh, okay Radhe this is a tricky question see uh, when you <clears throat> when you say only a particular discipline of engineering how that is going to help you it it does not work like that you have to understand that these are all coupled together okay so data science and machine learning is not a strict discipline it is a value with a technology that can be added to any discipline okay so whether you are a mechanical engineer whether you are an electrical engineer electronics computer science it doesn't matter as long as you can mine data from any system you can apply ai and data science and make it work so this is going to be not just a um, value add skill but an essential skill that you will be uh, all of us will have to possess in the coming few years because without this there is no intelligent system to be developed Uh, no, Mithilesh, uh, there is nothing like that. Uh, salaries, you cannot like, you cannot put a figure. They, it depends on a lot of other parameters. You will pick that up as a, as you will grow. Okay, so um, I think uh, this is not a good um, like understanding. Okay, right, like this, you will not be able to understand. There is no figure to be put like that. Okay, the, uh, if I learn data science, what is this salary going to be it it does not work like that okay no dheeraj uh, okay dheeraj is has has a very good question is it very hard to learn if someone is having no background of it okay when you say no background 
it uh, no, okay dheeraj let me ask you something you might not have any programming background okay but all of us have basic understanding of mathematics okay like basic statistics mean median mode all of us have done that right basic probability how to calculate basic probability you have all of us have done that right now then what we have done is in the school and colleges curriculum we have learned all of these basic mathematics then all of a sudden we have not been touch with basic mathematics and all and we have done a lot of other things in working in our uh, uh, like studying in our specific discipline then working on our uh, uh, current projects in our organizations and we have been not in touch our responsibility here is to bring you back in touch okay we give you the basic understanding of basic mathematics that is required for this and we take it forward so if you don't have any background then that is the ideal situation ideal scenario for what we need from our candidates you don't know anything you come to us we teach you you become an experienced uh, become an experienced professional that's how it works so that is not something that you have to be worried about i think that answers your question dheeraj yeah okay uh, radhe asked an important question saying he is working in marketing department working on lots of data and making decision and data in imported from is important from sap online platform uh, okay i think something else is coming i think this is a, a uh, see <clears throat> if you are asking in at this point that whether your profile suits a data science professional or not it absolutely suits okay if you are working as a um, as a, uh, on mainframes if you are working on oracle you are working on any sort of data base um, it it has to be like it can be let's say uh, a sql database no sql database it can be an sap erp anything okay if you are working with a lot of data you have understanding of how data uh, data works data flows are created uh, dashboards are created okay dashboards work how data is sourced how data is um, modified that is an ideal situation that you are right now because with this idea once you understand data science you will be figuring out what is the next step that usually takes place from you okay so rather this is a great place to be right now okay uh, nishank asks uh, available job for freshers in data science a lot man oh, oh my god it, the market is completely op has completely opened up okay so um, a lot of jobs are available uh, there are uh, internships available uh, paid internships available uh, once you but provided people want really people really want people to have um good experience hands on like good understanding hands on okay you should be able to do something okay because if you are not able to do something then it does not work okay so that is what we make sure here because we are focused on interactive hands on sessions at ethans okay with python with data science with machine learning with ai all you are going to get is interactive hands on sessions where you work on something you build something you create something you solve problems and you are and you get ready okay so that is how it works so it's open nisha uh, vijay asks how much database knowledge is required the minimum database knowledge is uh, required see when you are working with data the main format of i'll explain this why analysis is related to database i'll explain this but database knowledge is required at minimum you should have a minimum understanding of how relational database works how sql works okay this is very simple to have i think a lot of us have got this understanding in college or let's say in work because uh, a lot of systems are dependent on sqlish database but if you don't have internet is the best source for that w3 schools you can go look up there you will be able to understand how it works but basic minimum knowledge minimum knowledge okay okay ganesh asks um, 
how we will get okay yeah okay um ganesh the uh, the thing is getting jobs is uh, uh, so you will be getting preparation on jobs from day one of this course okay from python in machine learning data science you will get you will get preparation of job oriented only the preparation is all job oriented okay how to get a job you have to apply you'll get a call you'll face an interview how to work on an interview we will guide you on that okay and uh, you'll be getting a job that's how it works so you'll have to work hard and we'll guide you through it every step of it there is hand holding and it goes through what are dheeraj ask uh, okay dheeraj your question is needs to be answered through the uh, through the slides okay so give us some time give me some time i'll explain it uh okay mithilesh uh, we think it will be starting from april start uh, the start of april but uh, let's see if things go well if we will start from april first that is where it is planned uh, aparna asked what are the requirement to become a data scientist you should have a laptop okay and you should be eager to learn these are the two basic requirements nothing else no other prerequisite aparna you should have a laptop or like you you should be eager to learn other everything can be arranged at ethans not a problem you should be able to you should be very eager to learn because this will be a course that comprises of a few months so you have to give show your dedication be disciplined and try to learn the things that come towards you okay okay uh radhe says um uh, job tracker uh, i don't think so we have something like that we have partners uh and we will be we uh provide you any notifications when it comes forward but uh, not like that it doesn't work like that amol ask if it gets started for uh, then will it be in morning okay timings uh, <clears throat> i think depends on the branches amol so um i'm not sure about that dheeraj the placement assistance part will be guided to you once this is not okay i'll tell you something the <clears throat> i think you are mistaking one part here dheeraj uh, this particular thing you can get it answered uh, not in this session but in details like i think you have a few uh, confusions and queries that you have at at your end i think it will be best answered uh, if you Uh, if you give a call to Ethan's desk and get it answered, because that will be the best way to answer all of these questions related to you, the assistance that you need. Okay. Okay, Vijay. Uh, Vijay says I'm not aware about it. Is it Java? Uh, okay, Java right now is not <clears throat> a good option for data science. <clears throat> okay, so right now we are not sure what is coming ahead, but right now it is not. Rohit. as duration of course uh duration of course is uh, see the total duration will take about 5 months because it comprises of python and something so it will uh, more or less around 5 months okay you have to spend 5 to 6 months that is the total duration of the course um because it is divided into multiple segments next uh, aparna says it is python mandatory to become a data scientist no but uh, python is the best path that you can take because python helps you enables you to move into any specific genre of data science okay that is something that we really need to understand because there are different genres of data science okay so python will help you to move into anything other languages not so much Vijay asks, "I am from mobile app development background. Will you start teaching from the very beginning, like from yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely." Uh, 
yes we will be starting teaching from the very beginning okay okay so thanks for the q and i think i have tried to answer all of your questions if i have missed anything please post in a few minutes because uh, i'll take some time right now to move ahead and uh, <clears throat> discuss a few things uh, that where we have stopped okay just give me a second <clears throat> Hi, excuse me for that. Okay. So legacy applications, how they used to work. Okay. So what legacy applications are traditionally throughout history, what we have seen is we have been using databases which are relational in nature and uh, basically structured data so when i say structured data just think about it in a the data that can be stored in a tabular format like rows and columns okay rows have numbers columns have names and yeah, everything can be structured like that if data cannot be structured then uh, if data is not structured then we ex do something like uh, etl processes where data are uh, where data are structured where data gets structured or leather and then what we do is we create something called a data warehouse so, so in data warehouses there are different structures like data marts and stuff so where we have a lot of data that are stored in heap okay so the larger the organization the larger the data heap once this data warehouse becomes good enough for us where we can source a lot of data from and do stuff what we create is we use different uh, bi tools bi stands for business intelligence bi tools to render data from the backend data warehouse and create interactive visual visual dashboards okay by dashboards what we mean we mean a visual representation that gives us a lot of information okay you might see uh, the covid 19 dashboards all around right through different websites are showing different things you might be able to see different other dashboards like uh, when ipl uh, ipl starts you might see different dashboards on different teams they show which are the best batsmen which are the best bowler which are the best teams how different statistics are played out against each other and so on so when you see all those visual representations in front that is a typical dashboard that has, that can be done using any bi tool okay so this is a traditional legacy application this is how it works it works on banking applications it works on your vodafone airtel bills uh, you will see that okay itemized bill how uh, how much you have spent on data how much you have spent on calling what how much percentage is unused everything every data is sourced like that okay banking to e-commerce to uh, telecom to whatever you can i get an idea of they're all they have all been using traditional applications like this okay where does data science come into picture okay so what happens in a data science process is basically we this example that we have just discussed okay this kind of example this kind of thing is also a format of analysis okay traditionally this is also a format of analysis so when i say analysis on data we want we want to say that the data is structured in format of rows and columns in tables okay and in order to understand any analysis from that data we want to do a query okay and that is helped by sql sql stands for structured query language okay so the basic the most fundamental form of analysis that you can do on any data is through sql like let's say when i say that okay give me the top five uh let's say batsmen who have scored last year in ipl top top run scorers of ipl so what you can do you can do a select star from ipl where <clears throat> batsman is top five you can write an sql okay and <clears throat> and you will get those five names right this is the simplest form of analysis you can do this in excel you can do this in sql but all you are doing basically is 
having a structured data and performing a simple query on that okay <clears throat> when we do this kind of analysis when we show these kind of data using visualization this kind of analysis using visualizations we usually term this under a umbrella term called descriptive analytics okay so what we are what we have always been seeing is a format of descriptive analytics in the world what data science does is it introduces another form of analytics that is called predictive analytics okay so let us discuss about this. where does it take place how does it take place where does it takes it form okay <clears throat> so what it does is whatever we have been doing collecting data formatting data processing the data in the correct format storing the data all of that is still true okay but what we are doing here is not only just give me a second and excuse me for hello yeah so what we are doing here is with this data we are trying to capture okay as many patterns as we can and try to predict something that could be in future okay so we understand a few patterns that is already present in the data that we have captured in the data warehouse wherever it is we want to capture that data we want to understand a few patterns and then what we want to do is we want to project that out and see what future can be told okay simple example again we are talking about cricket let's say when you see that with current run rate this thing is going but with that run rate the targeted score is that much that is a kind of predictive mechanism that you see okay let's say uh, when you when you surf on netflix you see that uh, you just uh, check okay what are the new movies or new series that are, that are there and netflix shows you this is a 99% match this is a 98% match this is a 97% match but this is a 70% match okay so you just get a understanding internally that okay this 70 percent match may not be a good movie as per my choice but that 99 percent match might be a good movie that i should watch right now that is a predictive mechanism okay so there are lots of predictive mechanism out there what what it is doing is based on some information that is already present with me i will try to see a pattern try to find patterns and try to understand that what could be predicted for future okay that is called as predictive analytics and that is what data science brings at us to us okay data science gives this to us with a lot of <clears throat> internal processes what it does what we need to do is once we have the data that we can use we need to clean that data in format of how we can be uh, how data science can consume that okay we can do some format of exploratory analysis to understand whether we are doing it right whether we uh, whether we can do anything more whether we can get something more out of that or not okay then we can perform certain statistical processes or maybe some machine learning algorithms and create certain models to understand how this could be generalized as a future prediction mechanism and once that is done then we can get more decisions out of it okay <clears throat> <clears throat> okay i see a few questions uh ganesh says okay ganesh uh again uh, ganesh this particular question uh that you have right now i think this will be best answered if you uh give a call uh, to ethan's desk because that is where these question will be answered uh because you have a specific question related to assistance and that um we definitely provide we are going to provide you but how it is going to be provided regarding that you should uh definitely give a call okay because i will not be able to uh, assist you into the details of that process <clears throat> <clears throat> okay 
so let us do a um, okay let me explain this and then we will do a simple thought experiment i want all of your participation okay so i'll just quickly explain okay what is a task i've been talking about data science data analysis okay so i'll discuss quickly about uh, uh what is the difference between the work that we as data scientists do and they as data analysts do so these are very uh, very you can say overlapping in somewhat but uh, but we need to be clear about the understanding so <clears throat> a data scientist is expected to forecast or work on the future making decision uh, decision making future uh, steps okay so we are expected to find patterns from past data and and uh, give some predictive mechanism predictive analytics to predict future outcomes right we have already discussed that and data analysts on the other hand do not go into the predictive analytics part they are still in the descriptive analytics part so they have the data they will do whatever that is possible on the data to extract and meaningful insights and all of that from data sources but they will still be working on the descriptive part of it okay <clears throat> okay so through data science you are able to create certain set of questions that could be answered as a business value decisions but data analysis uh, data analysts will only try to <clears throat> try to explain the already arising questions okay so there is no there is no value like a, a predictive value value add so you will not be able to answer what happens one year down the line what happens five year down the line data analysts will not be able to give you that answer whereas data scientists will be definitely give you that answer okay <clears throat> okay data scientists and data analysts both will address cert certain business problems okay but they will have different perspectives to it when data analysts work on a business problem what they want to do is they address the business problem from the descriptive part of it that means when a business asks that who are my customers or let's say they ask uh, what are the behaviors of my customers data analysts can do that data scientists can also do that okay their perspective is same what is current behavior okay who are my current customers done but where data scientist brings value add here is that it also gives you a uh, predictive mechanism okay predictive analytics so data scientists will not only tell you tell the business okay, okay these are your current customers these are the, these are your current business value but with this particular movement your value might go up or down in the next few years okay with this current movement these customers will actually go out of business will churn out okay they will not be your customers anymore okay because they are not getting proper services or something that we can find in the, those patterns we can find in this data currently these are the kind of stuff that data scientists will be able to add to the business and will help the business to take better decisions out of it okay next uh, very important to understand is that when a data scientist makes a future prediction it cannot be 100 percent correct okay why now you will ask that okay then why businesses use that okay businesses understand that there are a lot of other uh, areas or a lot of other categories or let's say points that we cannot quantify okay let's say you uh, make a prediction of a sale of a particular product uh, down the line let's say for this financial year but you made that last year you did not know about this coronavirus situation okay when you made that prediction but this year from january that sale completely went down in february it went down further in march there is no sale right now for that product and your business prediction did not go properly okay so you cannot you cannot quantify every situation as a data scientist so you cannot be 100 percent accurate so we don't actually get 100 percent accuracy we can get almost accurate predictions but we have to quantify that what is our confidence 
level on that prediction when we say that okay this will be the figure then what is our confidence we can be 90 percent confident we can be 95 percent confident we have to as a data scientist we have to quantify that but we cannot be 100 percent accurate because we are making a future based prediction okay whereas since data analysts don't make any predictions <clears throat> their <clears throat> their proposition that they are showing or or the value that they are uh, proposing or showing us as a part of their analytics that they are driving it will be always accurate because it is completely based on the data that is present that is not a futuristic mark okay so these are the basic difference okay i'll stop here because i see a few questions and i'll get some questions answered and then i'll move forward okay anuradha asks a very good question can we get an example of, of an algorithm or a model okay great question anuradha um uh, i'll answer that first of all amol asks if a person is having 14 years of experience in oracle apps erp and if learned data science then how this will be value added in terms of getting a new job and how the industry will treat those guys based on at your experience okay let me say you that if you're a 14 years experience and you come to my organization will my organization give you a uh, uh, give you a data scientist role maybe yes um but you will not be only a data scientist there see when you have 14 years of experience you will be given certain uh, a senior consultant or let's say certain lead uh, perspective roles obviously since you already have uh, uh, a lot of experience in the uh, industry you are an industry veteran in the area of oracle apps erp you will be always be given a role which has something related to that because you bring a lot of value from that perspective and since you will be managing uh, teams you will be managing multiple teams maybe across multiple locations if you are working for a large organization and uh, a lot of people works under you and there are data scientists how will you able to understand what they are doing how will you able to propose a business that your team is capable of make finding predictions in the business and giving you good use cases that could add a lot of value to the business if you do not understand this system okay so based on experience you get different roles there are there are people who work as junior data scientists there are people who work as senior there are people who um, who work as data scientists as well as they have organizational structured roles okay so you come under that paradigm sir you will have a lot of a uh, lot of value to add from what you have as an experience in your technology as well as application driven through data science okay where you can let's say through oracle apps or through something like uh, uh, some sqlish operation or let's say some application which um, deploys both of the things together you will be able to bridge that gap as a manager as a senior consultant who will be able to work on both the things guide teams into both the things and have your experience driven into those sectors that is how your experience will come into play okay siddharth asks uh, effective would be would this course for someone coming from automation background completely relevant siddharth please cite some examples expectations okay <laughs> hello is my voice better now okay thank you <clears throat> okay i am um, i am using charger uh, if if you're seeing any message that says i'm not uh, I'm, I'm not sure why but i am using charger right now um, Okay, Siddharth, I was, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example, sure, I'll give you an example, uh, but first let me answer Anuradha. 
Anuradha says, can we get an example of an algorithm or a model? Okay. Let me tell you about uh, uh, a model first. What is a model? A model gives you an idea, a simple idea, a generalized idea of how the patterns could help us identify um, decisions in the future. Okay. So uh, when I say that, let's say you are a, you have an organization right now and that organization is a small scale, let's say a startup, okay? Uh, let's say Hotstar. Hotstar uh, has, was a startup. Uh, now it has been acquired by Disney and they are growing um, exponentially, okay? So let's say Hotstar as a startup might have, let's say 50 to 200 employees at max and um, all of them were working uh, in different uh, areas there were sales people there were marketing people there were tech people tech also had different spaces there were the front end developers there were back end developers there were streaming developers a lot of different people working on the same platform right now uh, now after they've been acquired by disney now they have a huge requirement of uh, let's say 1000 people to be added in one year in their organization okay how they have to scale up just give me a second Okay, so they have to scale up uh, scale up within let's say one year they have to scale up with 1000 people now how do they do that they can they will start hiring but when they hire new people it cannot be like that okay someone who was already working on the tech platform let's say somebody was working on the streaming analytics and suddenly a new person comes into the streaming analytics and they give that person double salary it cannot work like that the new person comes into the stream anal analytics with the same level of experience with a similar background and they give them half the salary of what they were paying the other person because this other person helped them develop the thing at the first place that also cannot work these are organizational etiquettes it cannot work like that so what happens is an organization develops models okay with that model, they will use the data of their current employees. Okay, what is the experience? What is the platform? What is the department? How much they have been working? What are their, let's say, um, achievements? And based on that, what are the salaries that they are already providing their employees? Okay, based on this information, they let's say they had 100 employees. They have the data of what are the 100 salaries that they are providing to these 100 employees. When they will be hiring the next set of 25 employees, maybe, okay, they will use this idea. What is the current salary being offered to certain specs of people? They will use this idea to project the next salary so that everyone is in line. These kind of patterns will be very difficult for us to mine with human interventions, okay, bias, the simple human being, it will be difficult to mine. But with machine learning or with data science, we will be able to create a model so powerful that could recognize each one of these patterns, club them into a, uh, into a cluster of patterns and help us find a, um, a result that would help me take a better informed decision. Okay, this is an idea. This is an example of a model, simple example of a model. This could be achieved by any principle when you say give an example of an algorithm machine learning algorithms help us achieve create this kind of models okay there are different formats of algorithms useful in different types of data different types of cases and those things are uh, have to be 
told to you in details i'll not be able to discuss that right now but for this kind of an example you can think about an algorithm like let's say uh, multiple linear regression okay so which will be helping us based on multiple you know, patterns it will be helping us predict the salary of a person i hope that answers your question anuradha that was a good question okay uh next siddharth uh siddharth's question was that um he's from automation background okay and uh, he wants to understand whether this could be helpful and uh, uh, to move and what are what will be some of the examples or uh, some of the ex expectations from someone new to this field okay so automation uh, background helps you actually said that because you already understand because machine learning data science comes into the pipeline of under automation also because without automation we will not be able to achieve these things okay there are people who work isolatedly on machine learning or data science or ai and then somebody who works on automation or creating ci ct pipelines they implement and integrate these things into their application okay if you have experience of that thing uh, um, also then what add, like what helps you is you fit in into a role who knows those automation part as well as they are now into the data science paradigm so you get into a much wider role who can do a lot of stuff together so it completely fits into into this scenario okay so from someone new the expectation in the industry is that uh, uh, you should be able to perform hands on on um, on simple models okay uh, because industry does not expect you to be very uh, thorough with a very uh, or very having very deep understanding of a lot of models because it is a very wide area okay once you start understanding uh, specific cases to a specific organization then the deep dive is expected okay but as for someone new uh, we expect people to have fundamental knowledge on simple models i hope that answers your question siddharth okay next i have a question from mayank let me just read it out uh, okay this is a this is a, this is an interesting question where he says what is the chance of uh, what is the chance of an eight years experience person who is not having experience of data science but is or if complete this course then what is the chances of getting data scientist job in the market 100 percent okay this question i've already answered you do not get tr treated as an industry fresher again so please be sure about that your current experience does not go in dream it will always stay with you uh, you get reskilled which shows a lot of potential in you okay uh, second thing is uh, uh, the chances are 100 percent because there are lots of job in data science okay and most of the jobs that you get in data science are um in the mid level uh, experience uh, mid experience level so that's why it does not uh, uh, it does not um, um let's say it should not be a blocker for you okay so don't don't be di discouraged by by if you are if you don't know anything it's always to start it's always it's always okay to start from zero but if you are good at learning something just keep on doing that okay tejas tejas as it is okay to move through the content and reserve time for q a towards the end it is likely that the content might answer most of the questions all attendees might have definitely tejas this is uh this is always advisable 
but sometimes what happens is people tend to forget a question that they already uh, have asked or uh, uh, that they have, uh, that comes up in their mind so uh, usual uh, pause sometimes after a few segments would be okay and have some questions answered uh, always uh, we will also be doing q one is at the end as well so some of the things we will be doing at the end but sometimes we have to answer a few questions uh, i'll request you to uh, please uh, uh, please uh, bear with me on this one okay aparna asks can anyone become a data scientist with no experience absolutely aparna just you need to be a good learner okay okay adhiraj says not able to understand uh not able to understand why dhiraj because my voice is a uh, prob creating a problem or there is difficulty in understanding uh, any concept uh i think there is uh, there is some problem with the voice some some people are facing um whenever you face i'll i'll see i will not able to hear my own voice but i i am 100% sure that my internet connection is working properly uh if there is any disturbance please post your uh, post here that the voice is not proper then i'll make sure that it works good so abhinandan just uh, in the mid of it if uh, somebody is facing the voice issue it is recommendable that they should restart their control panel once again uh, okay. because your voice is completely proper to me as well as to other participant who is available uh, currently with me so those who are facing the issues with the voice they have to just uh, go back again start their control panel and uh, connect to the meeting once again that's how you can proceed okay okay and uh, dheeraj uh, please hold on uh, i think a few things that are not clear to you right now will get cleared in the coming few slides as tejas pointed out because some of the queries will get con uh, uh, answered as we go forward just uh, give a few more minutes just give a few more minutes just give a few more minutes and uh, and is, these will be cleared out okay so moving on uh now i would like to do a simple thought experiment okay uh, for for all of you uh, who are on the line so this will clear out some of the things that we are we have been discussing so let's say uh, starbucks uh, serves cold beverages and hot beverages Okay, just give me a second again. Okay, so cold beverages and hot beverages, but let's say they realize that the hot coffee doesn't have enough demand, and their raw material, which they fill in the coffee machine in the morning, is wasted at the end of the day. Now Starbucks wants to figure out how they can reduce the losses based on their customers actually buying hot coffee. Okay. So at this point, if this is a let's say a use case, what would the data scientist do and what would the data analyst do? I want your views. Just take a minute and give an answer on the Q&A forum and we will and I'll tell you exactly in any situation how these two uh divisions actually plan out okay just take a minute read this thing think about it what is happening here is that they serve both of the things so they have equal reserves for both of the things but they don't have enough customers for one of the items so a, a lot of those items are getting wasted they don't want to waste that they want to have an optimized solution okay so how would two situations plan out take a minute to think and then post your answer
Keep it simple. Okay, I see people posting. So let's see. Uh, Mithilesh has posted. Data scientist, you will take the average. Uh, okay. Okay, good. For the data scientist, it was a good idea. Mithilesh, kudos. Amol, yeah, this is generic, man. <laughs> Based on previous, yeah, this is generic. Okay, you are on the right track. You can you can give it a give it one more time. The thought. Uh, Mithilesh, data analyst. Uh, no, actually, no. Uh, data analyst part is wrong. Data scientist part is right. Mithilesh. Um, Abhishek says. He uh, data analyst will tell or report the loss which is currently happening and how it can be rectified. Okay, currently happening, good. Can be rectified, wrong. Okay, data analyst will not do that. Um, Dheeraj says data scientist will compare the past results and then will plan the future. Generic uh, data scientist will get through all the questions which are there. Well, the data analyst will provide solutions for it. Yeah, kind of right, but we wanted to just make sure about this particular example. Okay, data analyst will do sales analysis uh, of six months minimum, and based on that, data scientist will predict the future. Perfect, Yogesh. That uh, that's a good answer. Okay, uh, Aditya says uh, data scientist calculate sales percentage with respect to total sale. Add season parameter based on this demand change. Good answer, Aditya. Good one. Data analyst Girish says data analyst will find out how many average of person yeah, would be able to. Yeah, yes, Girish. Data scientist part is perfect. Okay, Tatatriya says data scientist find why the demand is less okay give the business suggestion like reduce the rate and increase the coffee good one kudos abhishek abhishek again says data scientist yeah obviously save money yes they have to save money but but that is not the business value here abhishek okay uh, businesses do not like businesses don't really uh, try to work on uh, let's say cost cutting or those things first they want to maximize profit first okay maximize revenue and profit first so give a way to do that first basically okay siddharth i see a lot of good answers okay i see a lot of people can think in the right lines uh siddharth Siddharth, uh, your both the things are good. Okay, both data science and data analysis part are good. Aparna, Aparna says data analyst will find out the peak time of hot coffee and data scientist will come to the ratio of customers. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so let me give you a good the uh, good understanding. Okay, people who could not answer, people who did not answer correctly or could not think, or let's say. Hot, but uh, did not go through properly. Let me give you a good idea of this. Okay. So, why does we? Why do we do this? Okay. So these are two. This is a two-step process. See, if Starbucks only have data analysts, what they could do is they could undersell. 
they could find a problem that okay every day they are wasting a lot of things but they want to have an optimized man what data analysts could do at this situation a data data analyst could say that okay the this this is the assumption this is the kind of data that they had this is the amount of coffee that they had this is the amount of customers that they had at what time they have most customers at what time customers drink hot coffee at what times customers drink cold coffee at what times customers are most most favorable for both of the things at what time which of the things of uh, which of the kinds of uh, let's say um, products should be served how they should be served and all of these things a, a customizable or uh, customized and uh, um, you can say properly prepped visual understanding representation of what is currently happening in starbucks a data analyst can show okay but then the question is how this could be solved is something that we need to look at a data scientist will look into this data will understand how and where and when these kind of uh, patterns emerges that okay in the morning people come in and uh, drink a lot of hot coffee but then throughout the day since the temperature and stuff rises and people are not really in the mood for a hot cup of coffee but they want to sit around and uh, uh, look at their mobile and drink a cold and hang out with their friends more of the cold frappes and stuff goes on and and the hot coffee uh, sales go down and that continues throughout the day and peaking at a lot of number of cold coffees in the night and very less hot coffees in the night so if this is a graph and this is how it is planned so a data scientist will understand these patterns and will try to create a try to come up with a model which should be able to map the use of the coffee and the sale of the coffee so that the production or does not make any waste in the starbucks so that is how this particular problem should be planned out and that is what the data scientist from its perspective will give it as a proper solution it could be driven by one model from the data scientist and it could be driven by multiple models working together it could be whatever but data scientist will properly give an answer on how the business would be able to solve this problem ultimately because the business is facing a problem like this and that will actually add to the value okay so this was a simple thought experiment that we wanted to do here that we wanted to do here okay so i hope that we are able to understand what i was trying to work on now now the bigger question that comes to all of your mind what is data science then what is machine learning what is ai what are these terms what do they mean is data science under ai is ai under data science is machine learning same, same as data science will clear that out okay <clears throat> so when i say data science so whenever you are hear the term science you have to understand that it is a study okay data science is basically a study of data in different formats data science through data science we study how a data can be structured how a data can be uh, prepared how a data can be uh, molded uh, massaged and used for making different format of analytics possible when i say different formats of analytics those are the terms that i've already used we can do predictive we can do descriptive but all of this together when i say all of this i say all of these together the mathematical approach the visualizing approach the data processing approach the predictive approach the descriptive approach and all of this together brings the format then brings the study called data science okay so it helps us dealing with all the tasks related to solve real time problem related to data that we can only get with the good understanding of data okay we can we can uh, use different models different approaches different tools but we are trying to solve business problem real time business problem that could only be driven through data and this is the study 
together we call as data science in order to learn this we have to understand some basic formats of mathematics we have to understand some algorithms we have to understand machine learning we have to understand statistical modeling and when we learn all of this you can say that you understand data science as a whole okay so that is data science the the physical study of it okay what is machine learning a lot of people confuse machine learning with data science. machine learning is not uh, like data science and machine learning are not the same thing okay let me clear this out okay machine learning is a principle okay machine learning is a principle of creating generalized models okay these terms may be <clears throat> difficult at right now but let me give you a analogous example of doing this okay so let's say i want to create a model to predict salaries of hotstar employees okay the, that same example let me take you back to that now in order to do in order to create that model what i can do is i can take two paths one path is completely rely on mathematics using mathematics i can perform different operations create different uh, ideas theoretically and create a model also theoretically that could only be valued by pen and paper that's it okay on the other hand i could get real data i could apply a programming principle an algorithm on that that algorithm will try to understand patterns using using different mechanisms and based on the patterns it will try to create that similar model but the approach will be algorithmic okay now this algorithm approach that we use is called as machine learning okay so when i say machine learning machine learning is simply a process okay just to give you an understanding again on what machine learning is machine learning will help us usually it helps us solve a data science problem it helps us create a model but it does that using a programmatic approach using an algorithm okay so it is not same as data science machine learning is a underlying concept machine learning is a principle that we use to perform data science or modeling in general okay you have to understand this because machine learning comes from a different perspective okay i i will stop here once again because i know people have queries if you have any queries just post them and we will discuss and go further because we will have to understand the differences between these terms because these terms form a very large technical umbrella okay machine learning is basically a part of artificial intelligence okay so when i say artificial intelligence artificial intelligence is a way of creating a uh let's say a, a mock or let's say a um, a replica of human brain basically artificial intel intelligence comes from human brain so we are trying to create a mock or a replica of a human brain but what are the building blocks of that intelligence in human brain that comes from different studies of neurosciences and all those things which has been again mocked and replicated in the format of machine learning machine learning through time creates artificial intelligence machine learning through time creates artificial intelligence artificial intelligence is a broader concept okay which helps us understand let's say uh let's say Uh, intelligent systems when i say uh, robots when i say iot's when i say let's say uh, self driving cars that is an ai system but ai system cannot only be visualized that ai systems can be in your app 
your Alexa, your Siri, uh, let's say the YouTube app, the Facebook app, whatever you're seeing, they are all constantly learning, okay? Through your usage, through your um, recommendations that you're seeing, it is all constantly learning. Those are also AI. So AI is basically termed as any intelligent application that could be um, physically viewed or used, okay? But in order to create that, the fundamental steps that we use are all uh, being driven by machine learning. Let's take again, let's do another thought experiment, okay? Let's say uh, a newborn baby, okay? A newborn baby who don't know anything about anything. How do they start walking? How do they start talking? Because they're taught, they see and they learn. They hear and they learn. They're taught and they learn, okay? Like you, uh, uh newborn babies hear the language their parents or people out uh, around them are talking they pick up that language a newborn baby can be taken to a foreign country and they will pick up that accent immediately a pick up a language that their parents might not know they can pick up that language easily they know how to run they know how to walk they start from walking they start from getting up then they start walking then they start running so step by step Machine learning works in the similar way. Initially, we have to teach a model, we have to teach an algorithm, we have to let the algorithm understand, okay, okay, based on this, this is what happens. Based on this, this is what happens. So it tries to understand, tries to learn, and tries to pick up things. Once it tries to learn, once we teach it how to learn new things, then what happens is it tries to create its own mechanism of learning okay it tries to understand okay if this happens then that can also happen it tries to understand patterns right to tries to connect patterns among themselves and this is what leads to an ai in general just thought think about a self-driving car when you drive on a road your eyes and brains are constantly communicating with your hands and legs okay because you don't when you when you try to press a brake or accelerate you don't necessarily look at your feet and instruct your feet to do this and do that or look at your hand and instruct your hand to change gears okay your eyes look on the road and your brains deduce what you are seeing and takes a decision and your legs and hands are moving okay similarly that should also happen in a self driving car then that means the self-driving car is looking at things, processing that in its core, taking that decision, sending those signals to the steering, to the brake, to the gearing system, and that is doing the same thing, right? So these internal systems have machine learning that can understand what data they are fetching and what decisions to be taken. They each take a decision, they each communicate with each other and take the major decisions of how the car has to be driven. Okay, if you ever see a video of people uh, going on autopilot mode on Tesla, then you will be amazed at people can actually uh, select routes and they go to sleep in their car. Okay. Okay, I have a question here. Great. Um, Mithilesh asks, I thought we learned by realizing the No, Mithilesh, we don't learn by that. Mm, uh, that is a wrong notion of how this could be learned. You don't, uh, I think what you are meaning to say here is that uh, you learn by teaching what not to be uh, done, what is what's not to be done, and then uh, the machine learns what has to be done, right? That is what you are trying to say by bad side of action, but no, that is not how it is learned. Because uh, by eliminating ways, you cannot uh, learn what has to be, uh, what the action has to be taken. Uh, it is a different mechanism, uh, uh, the learning me method. Uh, I think we are out of scope on discussing that, but uh, but that is your idea is not the right way of doing that. 
okay so data science again let me give a quick revision data science is the broad study of understanding uh, maths uh, algorithms modeling all together put in a in one segment and understanding all of this is basically called as data science machine learning is a principle is a method of actually achieving this okay achieving that model is known as machine learning what drives machine learning is again the similar concepts of uh, uh, similar concepts of data science again so machine learning is a way of achieving that a model uh, ai is an amalgamation of multiple systems that are machine learning enabled discussing talking to each other and making a decision okay that is what ai usually means uh, it can be thought in different ways uh, it could be uh, it could be an app it could be an intelligent system it could be anything but it has to be intelligent by intelligent means it can learn okay uh, i have a question here mm. oh no i don't have a question i'm sorry okay next uh, next we'll be discussing uh, what is deep learning so till here what we have understood is that uh, uh, ai's ai's are created by machine learning that means uh, in order to create an ai system uh, you need to develop machine learning uh, algorithms machine learning applications that could help you create an ai correct but machine learning application is um, uh, in order to create a machine learning application or a system you need to provide a lot of information to that system okay systems cannot figure these things on their own okay deep learning is an aspect of ai again of machine learning let's say uh, which can figure out uh, data on its own it has the capability of learning how the data data behaves and it has a mechanism of figuring out uh, a lot of information on its own and helps systems to learn on that so deep learning is basically a subset of machine learning a specific way of doing machine learning okay machine learning is a specific way of implementing ai okay so deep learnings are deep learning um, concepts are realized or implemented uh, through network configurations which we call as artificial neural networks basically in maths you have already studied graphs or maybe you have heard about trees okay so neural networks are similar concept okay uh, not exactly like trees but like graphs okay so uh, so using neural networks we implement the concept of deep learning where where it is basically trying to achieve what machine learning tries to achieve the same thing creating a model but it does not ask you or ask the uh, ask more information about the data like machine learning does it can work with very simple or no information okay it can try it tries to figure out everything on its own and it tries to develop a model if, from the scratch by not from nothing okay from zero to everything it can do it do on its own okay so um just to give you an example let's say uh, deep learning can uh, can understand uh, understand uh, let's say through machine learning you are trying to achieve what would be the uh, what would be the salary for hotstar employees that same experiment through deep learning if you try to do that uh, when you are doing with machine learning you need to specify the machine learning okay that uh, okay location is an important factor because from pune, uh, in pune the salaries might be uh, higher than what it is in ahmedabad and so on uh, you need to specify that information when it 
where when you are doing machine learning because machine learning process will not be able to figure that out on its own but when you are doing that using deep learning you might not provide that information okay at start but the algorithm would be able to figure that out when it is learning so that is how deep learning is different so it is trying to achieve the same thing but from a different perspective I have a question. I'll stop here. I know people have questions. Let me stop here and let me answer. I think Manish. Manish says Gmail feature that builds in autocomplete suggestions for faster typing. Correct. That is uh, an example that is achieved through something called as uh, recurrent neural networks um uh, using something called lstms uh, it uh, it learns on it gmail has learned on how people actually got what message and replied with what messages okay so they learned on that and then they have uh, uh, come up with uh, suggestions for you so whenever you open a message their application reads what is the content of that email or the or the mail and it provides you prompts for uh, standard responses on that okay so yes that is an ai application uh siddharth says out of curiosity um just wanted to know if this course covers implementation of image recognition libraries like opencv and some of the libraries related to raspberry pi etc any pilot project on this area okay uh, so the so the part on ai will cover uh, computer vision where you will be working with opencv as well as with uh, uh, as well as with yolo and rcnn but uh, raspberry pi is not included see uh, it, it is simple so uh, if you understand computer vision implementing it on raspberry pi's or through raspberry pi is not problem it's not a problem uh, you can do that with opencv and raspberry pi but libraries specific to lab raspberry pi or uh, very specific implementation to raspberry pi will not be some a part of this course okay pilot project yes will be doing a computer vision there is a computer vision um, pilot project where you are trying where you'll be able to work on real time uh, uh, detection algorithms okay like video uh, from video there will be detection so that is something that you will be doing aditya asks are there any live applications where output of data science or solution algorithm is used as input to train the ai ml system oh my god okay uh, your facebook app is 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 a, is a similar example okay uh, live example live application your facebook app see when you uh, let's say your uh, some let's say you open an account for your father okay and then uh, he gives a few information on uh, on his profile okay and he puts a picture few information where he lives where what was his school what was his college where, where did he work and all those stuff and immediately he gets a few friends from his school immediately gets a few friends from his college from his uh, let's say from his uh, office previous office and they are all onboarded they are friends that's good but how does how does facebook play an important role here because facebook constantly at that point of time shows your father that okay this is what your friend sees this is that friend shares this is what people in your neighborhood is doing this is what your kids are doing this is what they like this is what they see this is what they share they constantly fill your timeline with that okay now what do they learn when your father sees that he can choose to like he can choose to comment he can choose to share all of these operations have different weightages when they like when they comment when they share facebook learns on them okay facebook learns that whether that person has seen that whether that person has liked that whether this person is choosing to comment whether that person is so excited that they are sharing that out to the world that they create they learn and they understand that okay this person is very affected 
by certain types of news this person is very excited by certain types of uh, videos this person is not at all excited by certain types of photos so facebook constantly learns on that the more they understand your behavior the more they push those kind of uh, similar contents okay this is a very important understanding for you because facebook constantly learns on your behavior the more you restrict your behavior to a certain type of uh, uh, certain type of let's say uh, idea the concentrated those kind of contents will be on your page okay you can see some people are only sharing funny content because they are only looking at those content some people are only sharing political contents because they are only looking at those contents okay so that is how facebook learns so this is a live example constantly learning okay satyajit raut uh, says uh, ask what is the difference in value of taking short time classes in training institutions on data science versus pursuing a diploma course in college or university on data science very good question i would like this question to be answered see uh, this this particular course is uh, is aimed you have to understand where uh, who where is this aim this is aimed at enabling professionals freshers to quickly get hands on training on these uh, course on this technology and get yourself a place in the industry okay now when you pursue a long term course you are dedicating yourself long term when i say long term you are pursuing a diploma postgraduate diploma or masters it's almost two years okay one year plus okay two years so first thing um, is that two years is a long time to look at this paradigm constantly libraries are evolving constantly technologies are evolving all the organizations which are contributing to this open source technology uh, with their own libraries and stuff they are already competing with one another google is competing with microsoft microsoft is competing with facebook people are coming with torch tensorflow every time this is evolving everyone is competing with aws so whatever you are trying to learn it has to be fast it has to be grasped fast implemented fast get into the industry work on it if you spend a lot of time on learning these things what you do is you end up uh, you end up the uh, end up with missing an opportunity on working on a uh, on a technology that uh, completely just blew off okay and what happens is the more you take this uh, uh, longer into the time uh, the more this becomes a problem the more problem it becomes okay this is one aspect another aspect is when you go for a longer course it is not focused on application okay it is more focused on the engineering or uh, or the or the research and development aspect of it okay uh, there are a lot of students from candidates from ethans who have taken our course and after that they have went on to universities abroad and uh, pursuing master courses there and have got, some of them have completed and got good uh, opportunities in organizations there some of them have completed and are doing are further uh, pursuing further courses on there like phd and stuff uh, what is the difference between what they are learning there and what they are learning here is that this is a uh, this is a fast course that takes you from zero to hero in about a few months and gets you the industry exposure that you need but what happens when you take a course uh, in india or abroad what happens there is they again start from the first and then you are asked to do uh, uh you are asked to do a lot of research work on something that has not been developed uh, and you are asked to create papers write papers and publish that a lot of indian students do not actually have the ability to do that because our education system do not teach us teach us that through all of these years of education so they face a lot of problems in doing that and finally they come up come up with very 
poorly written papers okay so uh, most of the times those are not published if you are writing a paper and it does not get published in any journal then it's of no use for you or to anyone else so please keep that in mind when you are taking such a decision i hope that answers some of the questions are we going to get the study materials like books or anything yes you are going to get for uh, most of the things uh, see books are uh, something that will be provided for python and data science but for some of the stuff on ai you will be provided with materials that have been sourced from all across and have been created by the content developers okay okay so moving forward i think we have cleared this part out um, now very simple i have already cleared this out why should you choose data science obvious reasons because this is uh, this is a particular this is a particular uh, profile that will link you very close to the business you will not get any uh, any like from the junior to the senior levels you will not get any other profile that works so closely with the business and also constantly understand evolves with the business and adds value to that okay very few profiles will be like that so this is a very important fundamental idea okay don't look after the salary don't look after anything else understand that this is a very big value add okay for any business right now it is only only restricted to uh, let's say the it division of it sooner this is spreading out to mechanical electrical uh, let's say marketing even ed tech companies uh, like baijus and stuff everyone everyone is on board with this this is going to be if i'm if i give you an example baijus the learning app okay they employ people who perform their sales for them they want their sales people to be data science enabled by this year all of their sales people and this is going to be a new normal in the coming future so you have to understand that choosing data science is no more an option it is a reality okay okay so the numbers are going steeply uh, across the globe uh, how many data science workers are required always the demand is much much higher than what is the supply and we as indians with our great population in the it industry we are the only country capable of serving this demand okay so we have to take this in uh, we have to take this responsibility we have provided the world with java professionals mainframe professionals uh, sql professionals we have to be the ones to supply the world with more data science professionals so you have to learn that it's a responsibility on us okay okay i see somebody has posted just give me a second uh rather said sir can you please repeat what you said about what <laughs> okay about what can you please say about what okay satyajit says what is the visualization tool will be used to cover in this course there are multiple tools satyajit see um you will be doing simple visualization with uh, python uh using pandas using matplotlib using seaborn um using ggplot all of the things which you can use programmatically okay there are options of you going with other visualization tools uh, uh, so uh, like uh, plotly also will be an option so you will be able to get all of these things so a lot of visualization any chance of tableau power bi okay tableau is a uh, is a sub part of under this curriculum but also taken out from the uh, uh, out from this data science curriculum as a whole okay but there are options with ethans where you can be uh, able to learn tableau as a part of this particular curriculum um power bi i'm not so sure okay uh, rather says marketing fields you were saying something couldn't 
hear it properly okay marketing field i'm saying that this is data science use of data science is going to be the new normal for marketing uh, uh sales and marketing people as well so sales and marketing will not be a customer centric consumer driven uh field where only field work and only sales speed pitch is required no it is not going to be that uh, we will be uh, seeing more focus on data science because a lot of organizations which are sales centric are pushing their sales personnel to be data science enabled okay okay yogesh says on which python part of python should we focus on what basic python should we learn okay uh, so basic python has to be learned obviously and which part you have to be focused you don't have to uh, see we have designed a very particular curriculum on python that suffices your needs to be a data scientist okay the python curriculum teaches you python that takes you from nowhere to somewhere and you can take a call on becoming a full time python developer altogether an automation expert um, uh, let's say uh, rpa expert there is uh, you can go to aws you can go to web development you will be getting such knowledge of python with this python course okay so this is a python pack that uh, gives you complete python development experience okay now why do we need data science because in data science you will be working with a lot of algorithms which are python uh, oriented which applies object oriented concepts of uh, of python and to use that in terms of an application development in ai you need such knowledge of python see when you open a book like let us see with, of yashwant kanitkar or something you see concepts like what are the starting data types functions if else looping all those things those are the building blocks of any programming language when you learn python you'll also have to learn those things in python as well those syntaxes right but then we want something more on that so that is why the python course is recommended so not only basics a bit intermediate a bit advanced okay okay suraj says hi i have enrolled for the python course with ethan's can i enroll for ds course in parallel i think so suraj i think so you can do that but uh, but you have to be more sure about that once you uh, please have a discussion with ethan's desk desk okay yogesh says how to improve analytical statistical logical skills for data science one of the best questions i've heard so far see uh, regular aptitude will be beneficial for it to just basic logic see analytical uh, aptitude or analytical ability is something that you can hone uh, over any mechanism or any um, uh, these skills you can own over uh, any platform okay but state statistical and logical skills of data science will be used throughout your curriculum in this course every day you will be ha you'll have to apply them so your you will be exercised on those parts so you don't have to worry about that okay so moving forward uh, okay moving forward uh, job trends as you can see that we have a steep curve for data scientist roles in um, in r and python now i'll give you uh, okay manish asked something how data science correlation with dashboard i'm not sure which kind of dashboard you are talking about manish give me a one liner okay again another thought experiment for all of us how many of you i think most of you have seen covid 19 dashboard correct can you tell me whether that dashboard is descriptive analytics or predictive analytics i want your answers to be posted on the q a forum the covid 19 dashboard is that a format of descriptive analytics or predictive analytics correct so most of you have got that right it is a descriptive analytics why because the data on which we are 
trying to project the dashboard is is something that is present and we are just showing that in some format okay so here data science plays an important role it's to understand how that data can be formatted into different formats uh, into different ways we can spice that up we can we can splice that up or we can con concatenate other data and show a dashboard that could be visually interpretable and um, uh, you can say uh, uh, exciting or not not exciting i'm sorry for that choice of word uh, uh, interpretable and visually um, you can say uh, you'll be able to understand and interpret that easily okay so that is where data science plays a part any dashboard without the idea of data analysis or data science will be very um, uh, will be very uh, you can say not um, it it will not appeal to the uh, visual um, representation okay it will not appeal because you don't know the basic crossword of it how to show a dashboard once you understand ki, okay these data can be shown in this format this data can be shown in this format this data can be shown in this format you have the complete idea of how the dashboard could look okay that is where this plays an important part see like this just to give you an example this job postings graph that you see here this is a graph that shows that how many jobs were posted uh, on data scientists with these technologies r sas and python over the years so we have a data on so many years till the end of 2016 as you see and you see that this has been represented as a curve here okay if somebody did not have the idea of data science maybe he could have used this data and tried to project it in bar graphs for each year okay he could have done it like 2012 he could have shown three bar graphs 2013 also three bar graphs 2014 also three bar graphs the bar graphs height will show how many jobs were posted and so on but this kind of graph looks more appealing because it gives us a lot of information it tells me that okay how much percentage of job postings were there out of all the jobs posted over the internet how much job postings of data scientists were there for sas for r and python and we see very minute details where and which part things have changed okay so that is that is where the idea of uh, a data science comes when you are trying to create a dashboard so this is a this can be a part of a dashboard right so so that is how it works and if you see here that in 2000 till 2014 all of the data scientist requirement were of the same nature right but after 2014 we see that r and python really took off and sas did not if we had data up till 2020 you might have seen that r has also dropped but python would have taken much much higher up there okay so this is this is a, a very simple understanding of where we are taking why python is taking this format is because it is uh, it is a language that is much uh, um, uh, like much easily interpretable and uh, uh, learned Uh, when you have a background of other programming languages like c type languages the constructs are similar and also python gives you a interpreter level uh, 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 language uh, python is a, is that kind of a language it helps us create scripts and stuff so so it becomes easier for us to work with that okay who should choose data science as a career is a very important thing here because uh, because at different um, processes you can be a contributor to this data science value chain okay so it starts with the very simple uh, data gathering part it starts with the very simple data gathering part uh where uh we have different formats of data gathering we uh, gathered there are people who uh, store and gather data from different logs different formats uh and there is a, a database which has to be maintained uh and the data is prepared once that is done 
then comes the format where this age people uh, at this time people are more focused on the data engineering and the data uh, science pipeline right so the data engineers are the one who uses different tools and technologies to source data from different formats from different uh, sources uh, it could be structured it could be unstructured they take the data they source it they stream them they process them and provide the data scientists with a data which can be useful which is useful for modeling and doing stuff further performing data science okay so there is where the data scientist comes here okay once the data scientist performs them creates the model then it goes to further uh, down the line where platform people deploys the model uses them in an application and finally the application is created okay i see a question here uh, uh mithilesh it would take around 10 minutes more so please hold on okay so so this is this is the entire pipeline this is the entire value chain so you can be a person who is as experienced as a uh, process um, manager an application manager application developer and uh, you can fit in this chain so that won't be a an issue okay next So now that we have understood all the paradigm, so what should be your track to learn DS is that you should have understanding of, uh, as I told you, you should have basic understanding of SQL. You should have basic understanding of structured data and uh, uh, and understanding of Python, statistics, machine learning, visualization, and AI are all part of this particular data science paradigm that we uh, the entire course curriculum that we have designed at e so if you just look at this then it includes these uh, modules where we do python programming which includes everything in the python programming part uh, you learn from nothing to understanding how, what are the uh, what are the principles of uh, what are the syntaxes how is the python program developed you get hands on trained on python programming and stuff okay then you learn a few modules of packages and libraries that are very essential for data science python specific libraries that are essential for data science so like numpy pandas matplotlib and and a few else okay so scikit learn so what happens here is you get a basic understanding of what's coming for you know coming forward to you okay so you get an understanding of that in the python curriculum it's, itself then you get a um, training on statistics a basic statistics and also some uh, uh, probability that uh, that you might need uh, in uh, in order to understand data science so you do the statistics and the probability part and you understand machine learning deep learning nlp and computer vision the total thing takes around five to six months but this is divided into three terms as you see see here you have uh, the basic term one takes you through the python foundation that means the basic python part then you have the python advanced that is the intermediate and the advanced part and then as i told you the python for data analysis that takes you through a certain uh, Python specific modules that are specific to data analysis. So how we use data using Python that will be taught to you in then you have two options of going forward. You have term two or you have term three where basically what uh, uh, what we uh, what is divided here is that you can do statistics and machine learning or you can do statistic machine learning plus deep learning and nlp and computer vision so this covers the entire course so what happens is you can you can take python python foundation python advanced python for data analysis and then you can take statistics and machine learning or you can do what you can do python foundation python advanced python for data analysis and you can do statistics plus machine learning plus deep learning plus nlp plus computer vision so uh, in statistics plus machine learning you are taught statistics you are taught machine learning you are taught model building you're taught all of that in 
uh, in the other one you are taught statistics you are taught machine learning but after that you are also taught deep learning uh, you are taught nlp that stands for natural language processing and you are taught computer vision so that is a, a longer course okay <clears throat> a bit longer i have a question here uh what is the scope sunil asked what is the scope of this course for network engineering background people okay network engineering background people so currently at uh, my uh, organization we are working with network people to understand how telecommunications network could be used for router uh, you can say router connectivities uh, and we are predicting router faults um, before uh, that happens so it's a frequency based task that we are doing so currently these kind of stuff are being implemented for uh, telecommunications and networking companies uh, uh, overseas but then it is also be will be a part of something here uh, for organizations like cisco they are coming up with uh, uh, machine learning based uh, router connectivities yeah. okay uh, so having said that uh, the main features of this program this will be 100% classroom training program um, you have to be physically present uh, this will be this will take only weekend classes the the training will be provided at all the locations Pimple Sadagar, uh, Karadi and Baner this will be focused on hands-on this will be focused on uh, project based training and uh, and this will be focused on practical learning experience okay so that you can show something that you have done okay satyajit says will there be any practice of data science on aws or any cloud okay this is a tricky question see uh, uh, we can like um, uh, I think this course will not be focusing on that but if you have any use cases where you will be you have to do something on cloud or AWS or or any other cloud where you have to do some data science activities and you have you require assistance on that there are all of the trainers that we at Ethan's are uh, are trying to uh, practice training here uh, you will get help and assistance from any one of you if you approach them Steve. okay so that will not be a problem but your specific way i don't think that that will be part of this course that will not be part of this course okay uh, this will uh, uh, all uh, you will have to understand this will be a project project based learning uh, classes okay uh, you will get assignments and exercises for doing classwork there will be something to do at home there will be practical sessions all of our trainee trainers are uh, very um, uh, all of us are very um, experienced professionals will give us uh, will give you real time scenarios to that we face and how to solve and uh, uh, you will also get weekdays assistance if weekend classes will be there but you'll be getting weekdays assistance by professionals and mentors through uh, we have google classrooms as well as we have whatsapp group where you can share and we can discuss about doubts and all those stuff um, there will be you will be getting a global outlook and certification for this and if you are uh, if you are a tra if you have to travel um, uh, between the classes if you're not present you don't miss class you get something called as flexible pass here and uh, for which you can uh, we can you can actually uh, sit for the class in some other uh, session and you can get it done so not a, a you don't miss any class okay uh are there any weekdays class yes there are weekdays class uh, rather uh, we'll discuss about that just give me a time give me a minute okay okay some of the contents will be available on uh, uh, will be available online as well which will be video contents okay so which can which you can share most of the things uh, will be handed out in terms of uh, physical materials or in terms of uh, programs and stuff uh, some of the contents will be um, online as well 
Okay, so these are the contents of the Python programming foundation where you get to learn Python foundation, building functions, file handling, exception handling, database, web scraping, uh, and all those things. And you'll also get an idea of, uh, of other things here. Uh, in the data science and uh, under the data science and machine learning and AI paradigm, uh, what you are going to get is uh, okay for Python for data analysis. You are going to learn modules like NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. Uh, uh, if you are going to learn machine learning through uh, through um, libraries like Scikit-Learn, and we will be doing natural language processing. Uh, in deep learning, you will be getting to know. Uh, neural networks you will implement them using tensorflow or keras uh, you will do computer vision in general where you learn about cnns and stuff and also you will work on opencv and uh, and other transfer learning architectures like uh, inception and vggnet resnet and mobile net alexnet we'll all uh, we'll talk about that and also some uh, also some uh, larger models like yolo and rcn and vcn and all those things okay so we'll implement those real time so this this is uh, uh, this is our entire array of uh, spectacular mentors who will guide you through all of your journey there are uh, uh, we all take care of uh, the from the very starting from the python to uh, different modules of python we have uh, machine learning statistics and ai uh, given to uh, imparted to you the training uh, i have a question here i have already attended python foundation course and Ethan, so should i start with ml directly obviously obviously okay uh, frequently asked questions I am not a not from programming background am I eligible for this course yes of course okay this is the uh, this course has been designed in such a way that you can still learn and be a, an expert in this segment we have seen people doing that okay uh, very frequently how do I get into the data science profession when I have no experience in the field? All a lot of people have already asked this question. We provide series of intensive modules, as I told you. You will be doing practical things here, okay, which will give you a lot of real-time experience. So you will not be uh, like no one anymore, okay? Whether should I choose Python or R programming for data science? Uh, usually uh, we used to prefer both but right now we are only focused on the python paradigm because we see that more of the focus in the industry is on python okay if i ever miss the class what are the options as i told you you never miss a class at Ethan's. you never do that you have designed we have designed flexi passes for them so if you think that uh, within the course time period you have a probability of traveling or something you might miss a class you can take a flexi pass and that class you can continue uh, or you can do that class later on i have a question here yogesh anyone who has already learned python can directly join ds class or he or she has to go python for ds uh, if you we prefer that you learn python from ethan's okay so what happens is that if you if we, the course has been designed in such a way that if you have learned from Ethan then there is no gap so we can straightforward when when I when somebody teaches you the DS or the AI part of it we don't have feel the necessity to go back to certain things and explain okay but if you have learned that on your own then there might be some missed uh, misses right so that brings a lot of blocker when we go forward so we prefer that you take the course from ethan's uh, are there weak yes rather i told you there are weekdays there okay uh that, that says scope of data science in biotech medical and pharma and <laughs> oh my god there is a huge most of the data science alg machine learning algorithms that we are going to uh, learn are or have been developed in researches in the biotech and pharma industry only okay in the medical field only most of the algorithms have been developed 
from those researchers or for those researchers okay so it's very widely used okay uh, moving forward do we see any more facts yes why should i choose data science as a career we have discussed this this is the best job that gives you one of the most exposure in terms of tech as well as business okay will you get prepared for an interview from day one okay because we, we our course has been developed and designed in a manner to make you job ready okay so that's that's one thing that we have kept in mind what if you get more queries your the, all the trainers are always available on you can communicate on mail you can communicate over a whatsapp group that will be created for uh, for all the official communication you we also are using google classroom you can post your queries or anything on that as well you're always reachable okay will i get placement assistance after completion of the course as some of you have already asked yes we have a great network of students and companies in pune for job assistance okay and uh, you are always notified when we when you uh, when there are job assistance to be provided and we provide job assistance for sure but the mechanism of it has to be detailed uh, like has to be told to you in details uh, uh, if you want to know you have to call the ethan's desk for that okay uh, the upcoming batches as we have okay i have a question i have a question manish asks oh no akshay asks what is the duration for data science course excluding python and when will the batch start okay when will the batch start we are going to just discuss that akash okay manish says currently i am working with iot projects read some data from hardware or machines using python how ethan help me on this okay this is a tricky thing to answer see manish see this course is focused on a specific curriculum um you can always reach out to the trainers and any technical persons in ethans or you can communicate with uh, anybody on ethans and uh, uh, they will be able to help you out with your exact use case but uh, having said that the course will not be directed towards your exact problem the course will be directed towards the course curriculum where we will provide in general the entire training to everyone that has that has enrolled okay so please uh, please understand that okay uh, akash the duration i have already discussed it the total duration of the data science course will be somewhere around 2 months 2 to 3 months depending on which path you choose if you choose stats and machine learning only it will be around 1 and a half 2 months if you are choosing stats machine learning plus deep learning nlp and cv or computer vision it will be around 3 months okay but when will it start just look at our next slide you'll be able to understand that okay so so upcoming batches as you can see this is what we have planned uh pimple sodagar pune weekends batch we will start from 5th april at uh, 5 pm to 8 pm weekdays first week of april in the morning karate at this time and baner at this time so you can just look at it officially these will be communicated over a whatsapp you can have a uh, uh, just have a look on whatsapp when these will be communicated and you will be communicated officially in other means as well so uh, officially we are planning to start things in the first week of april hope things uh, resolve as planned okay because we are still in a dire situation right now and so moving on to the next one so these are the locations as you already know in place of agar karadi and baner okay so having said that this is uh this is all guys uh i'll be happy to answer and take on take any more questions if you have uh so i have some questions aditya says what is the fee structure for python and data science uh, um okay radhe says what do we have but we do have python classes 
at 2 pm at banner see rather uh, timings can be uh, you uh, like worked upon timings can be worked upon uh, it it will not be a problem <clears throat> okay uh, hey jatin uh, actually aditya has a query on what is the fee structure for python plus data science so aditya, you know, uh, we are basically not the correct person for answer this query i think uh, the numbers are already given in a slide you can contact to uh, the respective branch because every branch have different kind of an offer is uh, going on like if you talk about anoida we have an offer going on which is every course at 9999 so i think we are not the correct person to answer those queries you have to connect to the reception desk uh, using these numbers and they can help you out with the details <clears throat> okay okay hey, aditya i think that clears you your query out he asks, uh, can the timings in Banner shifted to half an hour early? I don't think so, Aritya, because we have strict timing uh, timing schedules. I will not, I don't think so, it will be uh, able to shift. But uh, as as you said, your timings can be adjusted. We You can always work that out. Talk to the respective trainers and the branch heads. Uh, something can be definitely worked out. So don't get stressed on that. Okay, guys. So, uh, if you have any more questions, I'll uh, like I'll take a pause for a minute or two. If you have any more questions, then you can go ahead. Otherwise, we will close. Yeah, Akash asks, is the duration for weekdays and weekday batch same? Uh, no, weekdays are more frequent batches, so uh, the weekdays batches will commence and uh, uh, end um, uh, in a lesser time. Uh, um the you have to currently contact the branch uh, for this your respective branch and uh, i think uh, with me you can directly communicate once we meet or do something yeah so not right now we cannot communicate right now <clears throat> okay guys so if we uh, if you don't have any more things then we would like to close here so <clears throat> i hope this was informative i think we were able to answer all of your queries and provide a good idea about the course and what we are offering mm, that's good so abhinandan thank you so much for uh, uh, taking this webinar session uh, I think we don't have any more questions right now, so uh, we can just wrap up for uh, the day. And uh, mm -hmm. probably, if they have any kind of questions, they can talk to the respective branch and uh, talk to us as well whenever required. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Chalo, thank you so okay. much, guys, for attending this session. Uh, stay safe. Stay at home today. Yeah. And, stay uh, at home today. Please. So uh, thank you so much, and uh, we are leaving the sessions now. Yeah. Thank you all. Thanks, thanks.